at the place where you grow on that age, 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 age. All right, good morning, sisters. I think we are live, you know, this um, Zoom, when it turns you on, it doesn't really show you your picture. So I'm assuming that we are on as usual. So thank you so much for joining us. We try to be here on time. Last week, we talked about starting around 9.30, which is about 4.30 back home. And um, most of our audience voted for this time of the day. So welcome to the program. We are happy to have you. My name is Mona Jim Saga, and I'm here in Houston, Texas. I will have my two beautiful, wonderful sisters to introduce themselves. Sisters, please go ahead. Good morning, viewers. Thank you for joining us. My name is Augusta. I'm in Richmond, Texas. Thank you. We're going to have a field day today, so just keep your ears open. Thank you. Yeah, put on your seatbelt. I'm the one. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and, and I don't have a pilot license, so you can imagine how rough it's going to be today with, <laughs> with us in flight. Okay, so safety. Bye. Yeah, good morning, uh, viewers. My name is A.P. Simon Okube, uh, Lexington, Kentucky. So before we start, we'll give you just um, our usual food for thought. You see, for those of you of African descent who think that Christianity is all about buying private jets or eating rice on Sunday afternoon, Daughters of Truth have a word for you today. The Quaker reformers, the evangelicals, and other well-meaning Christians of the West began their campaign against the issue of human bondage in mid and late 18th century, they exposed the horrors of slave trade, sympathized with the lonely and despised, and denounced slavery as the greatest sin against God's will. All these efforts led to the formation of the Society for the Abolition of the Slave Trade in 1787. And Africa and the American Anti Slavery Society in 1833. Till date, the wealth of American Christians bring to table, the wealth the American Christians bring to table has enabled them to travel, to donate, and to shape agendas. Their standard of religious work in politics has helped them to push for changes in US foreign policies in war torn areas like Congo, Sudan and other nations like Nigeria, where Christians are daily being massacred and butchered and persecuted, of course. Our question this morning is, why are we not seeing such moves by Nigeria and African Christians? Mm -hmm. What's the freedom of their own people from the hands of terrorists in government and the evil political class? Why have you reduced your political power and might to just buying Bibles, private jets, as well as eating rice on Sundays and shouting, hey, Uchimo, Odiebu? That's food for thought. Thank you. Mm. My sister, what a wonderful food for thought. This one would choke all of them. You know, it would definitely choke them. They have not seen anything yet. When you are praying to God, and the, the same group of people in another country called U.S. is praying to God and they are doing much, much better. I wonder why you have not gone to revisit that your prayer and your fasting. And even that God that you're bothering all the time because you, you, God must be annoyed by us. The way he has given us the power to do the right thing. We chose to call him all the time. God, 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 God. I don't know why he has not sent his thunders to wipe away people that don't want to do the right thing. Anyway, back to our topic. Our topic today is house cleaning. General Rollins style, house cleaning General Rollins style. We all know about his story. We are going to play some uh, one of his videos that kind of like give us a little insight uh, towards his life and how he started. So um, hold on for us. Um, our brother died uh, November the 12th. So we would like to uh, give him a moment of silence because he was a great African. He was a great leader that wanted more for his people. So for that, we recognize him. So the minute starts now.
All right. Thank you so much for bearing with us. So our brother, Jerry Rollins, was born on June the 22nd, 1947, and he died uh, November the 12th, 2020. We know that he was a Ghanaian military officer as well as a politician. He was known for bridging the gap between the government and the government. He went as far as reintegrating the grassroots of Ghana into national politics by encouraging citizens to participate in good governance and to hold their political uh, um, uh, leaders accountable for their actions. He also ushered in a massive uh, decentralization reform, thereby opening up new opportunities for many poor Ghanaians. He once said that if people in power use their offices to pursue self-interest, they will be resisted and unseated. True to his words, in 120 days of being in office, he did what Nigerian government tried to do, uh, or Nigerian military tried to do in 1966, they failed. He oversaw the trial and execution of Ghanaian former heads of state, along with numerous high ranking of, uh, officials. Love him or hate him, our brother has legacy that speaks for him. So I am going to play a little video um, that we have of him just to get a little better insight as to what he has done for his nation, how he started and how he ended. And when we call upon our men here, some people say, oh, why are you calling men, men, men? What did, what did men do to you? This is a true example of a man here. Someone that even if you watch this video with us, the wife said that he, he they weren't sure if he was coming home or not because he was willing to die for his people. He was willing to go that far for his people. So according to the video, he went as, uh, uh, the interview, he went as far as, hello, sisters? Hello, are you here? Oh. We are here. Yes. We're here. All of a sudden I couldn't, find, I couldn't find this thing anymore. This is insane. I told you guys that I'm the pilot today. I don't have a plane. I don't have a, a school is it called, license to fly. Oh, I, I see that are on. We're, we're rocking with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So my goal today is not to crash no one today and, and, and bring us to a safe landing. I want it so much, put out a pilot so that we can cruise. <laughs> okay, that's a good one. I like that. I like that. Autopilot. Yeah, usually there's a little icon that have a picture of you guys on a corner, it disappeared. You know, all these updates. I'm like, what? What happened? All right, so here is the video. So the video is there about 29 minutes. So we're going to pause it in between and have some conversations in as we go. Hopefully you two will not try to play there. That a coup will not succeed if the atmosphere, the climate is not calling for it. He told Ghanaians, I have hard work for you. Christianize me if you may, but don't try to Europeanize me. In 1979, Ghana was at a crossroad. Another military coup was at hand. A young Air Force pilot who a few weeks before had been court-martialed and was awaiting execution was broken out of jail by his colleagues to lead what would be later known as the June 4th Revolution. Little was known of this man who would later be instrumental in changing the future of Ghana forever. His name, Jerry Rawlings. Jerry Rawlings was born in Accra, Ghana, on the 22nd of June, 1947, to his mother, Victoria Abok Chui, and his Scottish father, James Ramsey. 
He attended Ghana's prestigious Achimota School, an elite school at the time. Achimota was founded on the principle of providing African students with the British model of a public education. The school boasts of an impressive alumni with Ghana's first president, Kwame Nkrumah, Gambia's Sadawada Jawara, and Zimbabwe's president, Robert Mugabe, all being former students at different times in the school's history. I must say that it probably was one of the finest times of my life, you know, at Shimoto School. It's a place to be proud of. I noticed him, yes, because he was very visible and bullied us even though we were in the same class. Not in a very bad way, but you know, bullying is bullying. And um, so uh, you can't help but notice him, but I never thought that will come this far. By collective effort, that the nation's problems can be solved. Before his fame as a revolutionary, Jerry Rawlings was unknown to most of Ghana. In March 1968, he began his training as a pilot officer. I wanted to fly from the age of six. Honest. I was standing next to my mother, you know, in a compound house when the young man also in the house, you know, asked me what I'd like to be when I grew, grew up. And I said, I'd like to be a pilot. And bang, my mother slapped me on the back. Oh, yes, yes. You'll be a doctor. You'll be a scientist. I mean, the whole house, the compound became quiet, shocked at what had just happened. I never gave up my dream. He graduated in January 1969 and was commissioned a pilot officer. And because of his exceptional skill, he won the coveted Speed Bird Trophy. The Speed Bird Trophy went to Lieutenant J.J. Rawlings for being the best Air Force cadet of the flying training school. I won the Speed Bird Trophy. In those days, we didn't have, have televisions. You know, we had what they called the newsreels in movie houses, but my mother was not interested. He earned the rank of flight lieutenant in April of 1978. The early years of independence in Ghana were filled with great hope for the future, with the country's first president, Kwame Nkrumah's leadership set to catapult Ghana into a new era. But over the years, Nkrumah's regime became less accommodating and declared the nation a one-party state. While on a state visit to Vietnam and China in 1966, Nkrumah was deposed from power in a coup. I was at school, so how did the people around him, how did they conduct or misconduct themselves in such a way as to bring so much hatred to Dr. Kwame Nkrumah? What followed was a period of military coups, failed civilian governments that left the people dissatisfied. Widespread corruption made life difficult for the people of Ghana. This led to growing anger and resentment. Ghana then, everything was monopolized. I remember our basic food like beans and curry was only sold. I remember that time Malata was sold by one woman. One, believe you me, one person was selling that, only one. There was no soap. Just bathroom soap, there was none. Toothpaste, there was none. Nothing no food and we got to know that ghana was almost just getting to a ground so the point is that we have set the example we have shown that we're capable of doing it jerry rollings came into the public eye when on the 28th of may 1979 rollings together with six other soldiers were arrested by the militia for an attempted coup d'etat on the government of general fred akufo Rawlings appeared before a general court-martial 
charged with leading a squad of soldiers on the 15th of May, 1979. I keep describing it as turning on the gas in a kitchen. That's how volatile it was. From a distance, all you needed to do was to ignite a match and throw it inside. And that's what I could have done in 79, 15th May. I was praying for the best. I also knew exactly what was going on in the country and knew that he had taken the flag for all of us. Therefore, if he had to die for his conviction, I knew he would prefer to do that. He was found guilty and awaiting execution. The trial was a public one, but was meant to deter any future coups and was broadcast for all of Ghana to see and hear. They were, you know, they were trading some things among themselves, the prosecution and the lawyers and whatnot, and severally and whatnot, those terms they use. So I got up and grabbed the microphone, you know, said, I don't understand these terms and all that's going on, neither do my boys. And I'm just here, and I'm taking responsibility for everything that's happened, and to leave my men alone. But I wanted to make sure that they, they hear what I have to say first. He made an unforgettable speech in court and said, I am not an expert in economics, and I am not an expert in law, but I am an expert in working on an empty stomach, wondering when and where the next meal will come from. I know what it feels like going to bed with a headache for want of food in the stomach. He was an embodiment of the uh, reaction, the disappointment, the great disappointment of the people of Ghana. Instead, the name Rawlings became the symbol of hope and deliverance for the people of Ghana. On the 4th of June of that same year, a mutiny by officers in support of his cause broke him out of jail, sparking the revolution. So what would that mean? Yao Graham was in university then and remembers the mood of the time. It was in the middle of this split national mood that Jay Rawlings was arrested and reported as somebody who was planning to clean up the mess by overthrowing these people. Now, it's important to, to, to understand this because he didn't say anything. The prosecution said this was what he was about. But such was the mood that people identified that actually this guy is saying exactly the way we are feeling. So he became a hero on account of the honesty of the prosecution. So does anyone get any chilling? Uh, let's stop the video for a while. Does anybody get any kind of chilling from watching this video? knowing that we are exactly at the crossroad, at least our own with that we've been at this crossroad since 19 with the game with, and they put an end to it. So you're talking about a man that um, there was a widespread uh, hunger. There was a monopoly by one person. We know we have an example of that. Dan Gute has mo mo uh, monopolized everything and had the audacity to parade all over the place as the wealthiest men in Africa. Uh, we talking about uh, our brother who is fearless. And even when as far as taking responsibility for everything, all his boys, everybody has done, he said, here, I'm the one that in charge. How many of our men can do that? If he said, I said, oh, don't call me. Oh, if even if you bring an idea that doesn't include anything, they will say, no, 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 no. Don't put me, they will turn into a woman that is going through menstrual period. If you say a woman that is going through menstrual period has to take care of their child, they don't even care. They will make into a, what, don't, Gineke, don't mention my name, oh, this and this. And we are saying, where are the Jerry Rollins in our land? Where are our good men that is saying that the burden of my people must be upon me? The burden of my people, we have to have an, an answer to it. We cannot continue to live in a nation where we are always at a crossroad to hell. I shot, we are on a straight road to hell. Like one of our brothers said, you know, the tree that we talked about the last time, he said, it's, uh, how did he say it? It was uh, that we should put double hell on the tree. Yeah, was... Broadway to hellfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, highway to hellfire. Yes. So right. it's unaccountable what these people have done so have done to us. 
And we can see that there's an eerie resemblance. It's exactly the same thing right now, except that our own does not have an end in sight because people are not keying into the one thing, the one answer that we have to get where we're going fast. Sister, do you have anything to add before I continue? Okay. So pay attention. I'm writing down things. You know, there was anger in the, in the uh, state. There was resentment. We are talking about monopoly and the fear of where the next meal is going to come from. That this man is so um, familiar with hunger. Stop sharing, that's not what I wanna share. Have you found it? Yes. 1979, I was almost uh, 10 years. Uh, if I recollect- She looks like my sister, by the That time. June 4th, when we heard that something had happened, I think it was on the news. That's the first time you know that something is going on. They start playing uh, Ghana National Anthem. So we knew that another person had taken control, charge of the country. But who, they were not really sure. Some people went and spied and realized that when he alighted from the helicopter, the men picked him up. And when we saw him, we started screaming, JJ, JJ. And my dad would shake his head and say, wow, <laughs> we are in trouble and our kids are hailing this man. <laughs> because he was doing when right. You consider, you know, the difficulties, the, the shock effect that June 4th should have had on us, should have woken us up. And I do remember, to be quite honest, in those volatile, violent, difficult days when people were calling for let the blood flow, etc., there were some intellectuals and some diplomats who, I guess, have a better knowledge of history who were asking me to, to that I was exercising too much control. I was restraining it too much. Jerry Rawlings and his soldiers formed the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, AFRC. I didn't expect to be here. Later, the AFRC carried out what Rawlings described as a house cleaning exercise. This was basically the identifying of leaders that were deemed corrupt. The leaders were either sentenced to prison for their crimes, or in some cases, executed by the AFRC. Three months later, on 24th September 1979, the AFRC allowed Hila Liman to head Ghana and a People's National Party, PNP. However, Hila Liman's presidency was short lived. On 31st December 1981, after only two years as president, Liman's administration was cut short when Rawlings ousted him in yet another coup, claiming that his government was taking Ghana down a road of economic ruin. But it was his second coming, as we say, call it here, the 1981 coup d'etat, that then made him the figure that he is today, that was when people encountered him directly or indirectly. It was, it was a fairly difficult period. The PLDC is a government that is or should be run by the people. I ended up in office, not because I wanted to be chairman, to be head of state, but it was just my passion to... Yes, lots of people with vascular dementia trying to run stuff. My love of freedom. That's what puts me always in this position or put me in this position. Don't apologize, my brother. Rowling's government was called the Provisional National Defense Council, PNDC. P 
PNDC was made up of both civilians and soldiers. The government set about to restore the nation's pride and infrastructure through hard work, determination, and mass inclusion. The politics of the country was being driven very much by ordinary people, by young people, particularly students, and a lot of the people who find out across the country to build a base for the PNDC. Students took months, university students took months from school to go and lift cocoa for export. The symbolism of that was very important. I belong to the generation that actually had to stop schooling and we had to go out working to get cocoa from the farms to the ports to be exported in other things. It brought us awareness. If earlier on we thought there was a thin divide between the people and government, now that alone told us that we are the government and it's the people who make up the government. Absolutely. And that it is time for us to stand up for our own rights. That is what Jerry Lawrence represents for most of the people of my generation. <laughs> A hands-on leader, Rollins ensured the rebuilding of Ghana would be shared by all. Soldier and civilian took part with no task too big or too small. His passion is um, the underdog not being maltreated or mistreated. And looking at a situation where if we have, let's say, six million Ghanaians, he wants to bring all six million Ghanaians to a certain level of livelihood. I know him to be a passionate man. He wants things done uh, immediately. I always say, Kwame Nkrumah always wants things done yesterday. And Rawlings wanted things done immediately, quick, quick. Uh, they have that one in common. He's the type who does not mind getting his hand dirty. He'll be passing here and maybe we are doing a cleanup. He'll come and join us. He'll just get and come and join you. He doesn't see himself as being above people. I remember one of the pictures. He was at a, a Ashiyama cleaning gutter and people were standing there folding their hands and they looking at him inside the gutter. Your president. The young government was beginning to change the face of Ghana, but the economic reforms challenge they faced was one that caused Rowling's rule to change drastically. I remember in 1983, before the budget was presented, that budget devalued Ghana's currency from 2.75 CDs to the dollar to 29 CDs to the dollar. Previous governments have been overthrown for much smaller devaluations. The long-term effect of these economic policies has been to worsen inequality. All right, so there's some things that he mentioned here that I think we should sort of talk about. Um, the way he included the uh, citizens in combination with the army in terms of running the country the way that he um, included all, actually the masses and the students seeing that they are stakeholders in the new nation, stopping school to be part of what is, what is uh, being done to renovate the country. But the, another thing that I, I noticed is how whenever they, these so-called international communities see something good happening, especially in Africa, the first thing they do to us is to devalue our currency and bring it down so that they can stiffen our life and make it more difficult than it is. So here is a new nation that you guys been stealing from all along, all along. They have gone through so much turmoil and now finally they're getting a government that is working for the people and with the people. The best thing that you can, best news that you can give them to encourage them is to value their currency and make it almost worthless. But let's see what happens as we continue. So all I'm trying to point out here is that these things has been happening. They are nothing new. And we don't want all this lamentation, lamentation. You can see this is a good 
story with Ghana, a good case study with Ghana, how they went through the same thing that we're going through. And we cannot continue to pretend as if we don't have a solution when there is a solution at hand. So let me- Amina, before you even go on, um, you know, it, 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 it was not just trying to direct Ghanaians to a pathway. He was also part of the pathway himself. You mm -hmm. see him jumping into a gutter, you see him shoveling, you see him beating drum, you see him, you know, cleaning. And you are wondering, I, I, I don't remember, um, I don't remember any Nigerian politician, you know, getting into a gutter. I remember my, my mom's cause, my mom's nephew, when he became ordinary, which one did they do in that village? Um, yeah, man. Local, government, local, government, <laughs> yeah, man. local government, maybe not even local. Oh, it, counselor, counselor. Yeah, it was counselor. See, when he became counselor, if you now try to greet him, day good morning, he will just, you know, first of all, <laughs> size you up. He will size you up. And he had forgotten when he used to come and collect. I will cook the rice that we eat that time. We will come and eat rice. Na, ke, da, da. Then suddenly you can no longer approach him. You only counselor. I'm not kidding. Inferiority so, complex. Yeah, so we, we see Jerry Rollins jumping into the gutter, doing what, telling the people that you have the power, that the power belongs to you, that, that, you, that if you move, if you say no, no, it, it is no that it would be, nothing more. So uh, the, the guy's humility is beyond, I, I don't know. It, it, and honestly, do you know that we have some men like that in Nigeria, but 1999 constitution will frustrate them yes, because I've identified, I personally identified some men like that. We have. 1999, we, the constitution, we frustrate them and render their effort useless. And they will be forced to go back to what others are doing. You know, there's something remarkable in this video. The responsibility of the real, that he took it like as if it's a personal responsibility. Personal, yes, redemption, kind of. Because yeah. the first time he did the coup, he didn't, he didn't want to lead. He handed it over to that Leman or who. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, you do your thing. And you have removed it, which is, sounds like what our people tried to do in 1966, and he failed. Mm -hmm. So he said, do it. After two years, he saw that the man was leading the people down, down, down the drain. You were like, oh boy, I thought you went to school. What are you doing? <laughs> he came back. And they say his second coming. This time around, he said, oh yeah, we could not come up for road. I don't know why your people are making leadership as if it's impossible. Let me do it myself. Let me show you how to cook this food. You understand? We saw when Obasanjo, this is something that happened in Nigeria, when Obasanjo was released from prison. He was almost to be killed, just like exactly as if Ghana and Nigeria, God is just positioning them and saying, see what will happen if you do well, see what will happen if you do bad. Obasanjo was in a exact situation. He was brought out by his boys. But rather than move us, to freedom, he now sold us to darkness. Worst situation. And even when he saw that this thing is becoming worse, rather than stand up and do what you and say, okay, this is not, let's, let's do this. This is somebody that suffered, was in prison, did everything. He must have suffered hunger too, because I'm sure he's from a lonely background. But what did he turn into? A bully, a mm. master, the one that will sell all of us to full and ease and sealed our destiny with the terrible constitution that we are still battling with today. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, okay, sister. It's sad. Again, when you have people that have mental issues because they have schooled or they're in the military or they speak English fluent, fluently or they have good command of English like some of you will say, and you put them in charge and you're watching them destroying things that they shouldn't be doing. You're watching them not making things work. You're see seeing them fail. You're watching them and you're saying, this is my governor, he doesn't know what he's doing, but nobody has the audacity to say so. And we're there watching them because we're giving them the power and we render ourselves powerless. All right, let's continue with the video. It's almost done. Rowley's government's response to its critics was to clamp down on opposition. The media in particular was hit hard. Haruna Atta, a journalist, shares his experience. 
those were what one would describe as the bad old days when journalists were under siege, sort of. At that time, he was very much seen as the dictator, uh, like the, the uh, quintessential African dictator. Rawlings and his government had to instill measures that before would seem to be a compromise of their status quo dealing with the West. Pope John Paul described capitalism, the capitalist economic philosophy, as the savagery of capitalism. What are you going to say about us in the so-called developing world in Africa? Rawlings is a man of many faces. There was a time I wanted to be a priest, you know. Uh, Charismatic. How are you? I'm going to take it together with a flower. Oh. And now, his longtime secret as an artist has been finally exposed. You may not believe it, but I'd much rather be known as an artist than as a president. Just as I would much rather probably be known for flying skill than being a president. Maybe it's because through this you can see my power of observation, my sense of precision, my my striving for excellence. I don't know where you found this, but the point is I've kept quiet about this thing because I haven't done my wife's portrait yet. You know, if I'd done my wife's portrait also, I would have felt good about, you know, displaying this. A family man, he's married to Dr. Nana Ajeman Rawlings, his childhood sweetheart. He doesn't remember. I remember the first day I met him in primary school at a school called Mrs. Sam's School. And he obviously didn't recognize me because I was black, I was black. Because this lady was um, fair, and there were a lot of fair kids in the school. And he actually, she actually used to discriminate against the between the fair and the dark ones. So the fair ones knew each other, and the dark ones knew each other. So he didn't see me, but I saw him. <laughs> it's just a joke I crack all the time. Nana, in the first place, was somebody. I noticed from the age of 14, somebody I'd been in love with. It wasn't until about five, six years later that I could even, she would even allow me to hold her hands type of thing. Oh, it took a long time. Together, they have four children. Ezanata, Amina, Ya Asantwa, and the only son, Kimadi Rawlings. As if to protect them, Rawlings being in the center stage of politics created a deliberate wedge between his children and himself. In the event that his life would be taken, his children would be able to cope in his absence. I avoided my daughters, you know, for some years. I mean, I'd see them, but I did not want to develop any emotional attachment with them. I mean, I longed for it. I wanted to hug them and things like that, but I was afraid if we developed that emotional attachment and something happened, you know, uh, I wasn't too sure how they would be able to cope or, or handle it. And that's why I kept that distance. You see what I mean? Deliberately because of what I, the reason I just gave. There was not a good balance in terms of um, family and work. So I had to be mother and father to them almost throughout their life till they were adults. Yeah. It wasn't easy. He is also famous for being stubborn. In being stubborn, mind you, while I was in high office as chairman of the PNDC within the revolution, or head of state. My stubbornness did not translate itself into stopping our people from doing something 
that I felt would, would, would hurt us. One would sometimes allow it in order not to break the growing confidence in our people. They sometimes needed to make a mistake. My stubbornness did not stand in the way. In the early 1990s, the African continent began to experience a new wave of political structure, the return of multi-party politics. Much like the 1960s, as country after country gained independence from colonial powers, now the people wanted more. Rowling's always able to read the mood of the people, was quick to embrace it, changing his government from military to civilian. He did not fight against it, but he did say that, though he personally did not uh, believe in multi-party politics, but if that's what Ghanaians want, they would have it. So the constitution was uh, written and from 1992 to the present. We've had one of the most stable democracies in Africa. As required by the constitutional mandate, Rowling's term of office ended in 2001 and was succeeded by John Kufo, his main political rival. People like to make all kinds of claims about Rawlings that he didn't want to hand over. Absolute rubbish. I will use this occasion to tell them something that they never imagined. Had we, any one of us, dared to suggest that we're gonna stay on for one more day, would have lost the complete support of the masses. Jerry Rowlings is not your typical serious military man. He can also humor a crowd. My colleague, uh, ministers of state, honorable lecturers of the various faculties, your excellencies, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I think I prefer the lady. I prefer the lady. <laughs> oh. I mean, this little warm too you want to enjoy. You want to enjoy. <laughs> While he was president, Rawlings was able to use a grant of $50,000 from the Hunger Project cash prize. He had won a seed money to sponsor the establishment of the University of Development Studies, a state-owned university, the first of its kind in the northern region of Ghana. Before UDS was cited, people who attained higher education, most of them had to travel for two days in order to get to school. That tells you how desperate it was for people in the North to get educated. In 2010, Jerry Rawlings was named the African Union envoy to Somalia. I believe the African Union has every reason to feel proud. This is one political and military exercise that we've taken up almost on our own and one for the good of that country, for the good of all of us. During his time as envoy, Somalia, as well as other parts of Northeast Africa, experienced a catastrophic famine that the world called an emergency. Jerry Rawlings was on the ground to see the results of the famine and was deeply moved at the sorry state of the mothers and children he met. In an interview with CNN, Rawlings shared his distressful experience. When you look at the resilience, the, the, the fortitude, the, the strength in these mothers, you know, holding onto these feeble, fragile children, as sorry as you feel for them, you cannot help but also admire you know, their sense of courage and determination. I mean, let's do what we can. You're, you're clearly moved by what you saw. 
You may like him, you may not like him, you may agree with some of his methods, or you may not agree with some of his methods, but you cannot be in denial. You shouldn't be in denial because he's occupied a major part of the country's history. After 18 years in power, where you can say that actually, if you look at the sweep of Ghanaian history, Jay Rawlings is the second most important ruler in Ghana's history after Kwame Nkrumah. Nelson Mandela once said, when a man has done what he considers to be his duty to his people and his country, he can rest in peace. This perhaps is the case of the boy who had a dream to fly, and to fly he did, but he also became president. John Jerry Rowlings, the man who came, saw and conquered. Thank you so much. We are done with that. So Jerry Rollins, a president, a Christian, a father, a pilot, a priest, almost an artist, even a joker, as well as a good citizen. We thank him for his good services to his people. And we pray that Africans, the rest of us will find a leader like him who is willing to do it all for the betterment of his people. Sister so Augusta, go ahead. Yeah, we can we can wait to find such leader. In all honesty, we have, we have actually found the leader. It's just that people are not paying attention to what we needed to do. So, but we will continue to you know tell the stories so that they will understand that the solution to our problem is actually you know right in our faces. It's just that we need to tap into into it and move on. So now let me ask those pertinent questions everybody has been asking. What do we really want? How do we want it? When do we want it? These are important questions because everyone in Nigeria seems to be so tired of this current system. The system is not working for us. It's not. Even for those of us in, uh, in diaspora, the Nigeria system is not working for us because it's making those in diaspora to work double shift, to be able to meet with the, uh, with the, with the ends of those people back home. So it's not working. Everyone wants a change of system. But for you to build a new system, you have to do away with the old one. And we have been saying it, that the constitution has to be thrown out, not to be amended. Like some people thought that, oh, the National Assembly is going to amend it, blah, 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 blah. No, it has to be totally thrown out. If it is not thrown out, we'll just remain where we were or where we are presently. We have to do some house cleaning, like General Rollins did. But in this case, we have our own method of house. We're not asking you to go there and kill your politicians, no. He had to do that to create a, 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 a clear view for everybody to know where the issues are. But our own issue, we know what our issue is. We know where the root, the root cause analysis, we've discussed it like a gazillion times here. We know where it's coming from. And we know the type of house cleaning that we need to do. The current political class is full of people who are so used to evil and impunity. They do not want to let go of the evil that they are used to. They're so used to it. Because guess what? It's more money to their pocket. They don't care. They, they don't. I told all about my, my, my mom's nephew that just became ordinary counselor. It, it, it was like El Dorado for him. We all never meant anything. At, at that point, we were like church rats where he was. So that is it. They don't let go because that evil gives them more money to their pockets. They want things to continue the way they are. So far as they continue to smile to the bank, that is it. They do not want to get rid of the manipulative system. We've talked about this system over and over and they understand the system. But is this system that is giving them that immunity to be able to do whatever they want to do, however they want to do it and whenever they want to do it, it doesn't matter. They are covered. They are covered. That is the truth. 
They've stolen the people's sovereignty and mandate and do not want to be involved in any discussion on how to return it. You can see in the case of Jerry Rollins, he brought back sovereignty to the people. He said that sovereignty belongs to the people. He made the people to understand that you have the power. You have the power, not, not the National Assembly, not the politicians, the power belongs to you. So he showed his people on how to own that power. But in our own case, they've taken it away from us and they don't want to return it. It does not bother them that the so-called giant of Africa is down on her face, crawling on her belly. Hmm. All they want is an opportunity to drag her along so far as, as long as he's allowed to. It's okay for them to issue order to demolish a building full of human beings like they did in Abuja. This, this building was, people were still inside the building. And there's a demolition truck. I mean, what does that? So they don't care if the people in that building died. It doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. Blood, they, they now see blood as, I don't know. I don't know what they see blood, maybe color red. I don't yeah. know. Got that dirty water running. Dirty water. That's what they see blood as. So it doesn't even matter to them. So they kill and no one dares to question them. They build a litter everywhere with substandard buildings everywhere. And when their partner come in, they demolish them and build new substandard death trap structures because they have immunity in the 1999 constitution. And this goes to Okoracha. I was home last year. I saw all these death traps. These things were, they were dead traps. You don't, you don't need to be an architect. You don't need to be an engineer. You don't need to be an artisan to know that these buildings were dead, dead traps. The hospital, the uh, subdoor hospital that they built for that slain 10 year old boy. I think the boy was, was it in 2017 that that boy was killed. He built that hospital in the boy's name. I saw it. That's the most, I don't know who, that hospital, the building, the building, you can see it. You don't, as I said, you don't need to be an, active, a, 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 an engineer or a builder, building constructor or constructor, whatever, to know that this building would fall on people and kill them. And nobody was inhabiting the building. You can see from the, from the window, grass is beginning to grow inside a building. That's to tell you that nobody was inhabiting it. It was that bad. There was a police station that his daughter helped build. The police station had been, according to the people I was talking to, they said that it has been like that for two years. Nobody has entered that police station. And you can see, even from the walls, you can see it. The artificial plastic, uh, plastic uh, flowers he put in the entire over it. This guy built a lot of dead traps. The overhead bridge that he painted green. A lot of dead traps. And guess what? The uh, Supreme Court governor, that's the new one now, uh, uh, Opus Adema, you know, we told you that they messed us up with this constitution. You can say Sharia, a Sharia judge, telling us that the person we voted for is not the person that they would put there. They now put the person that took fourth position. And everybody called him the Supreme Court uh, governor. And that is what he is now, Haba. What else does he want to be, if not Supreme Court governor? He is demolishing those buildings. Of course, those buildings have to go. In my, in, in, that is in my own opinion. They really have to go because they are dead traps. But guess what? He's going to demolish those dead traps and put another dead trap upon dead trap. Because these are the ways and methods they siphon money into private accounts. These are the ways they siphon money. Money made for the community goes into their private accounts to their wives, to their girlfriends, to their boyfriends, to whatever, whatever. The money goes everywhere. Meanwhile, substandard buildings are built everywhere. So every budget is an opportunity to siphon money. That is what it is. If not, I don't know why Okorocha will buy plastic flour. <laughs> See, something like, you see this plastic flour? I used my other phone, so for some reason, I didn't get the pictures in. If you see that, you would cry. Here in America, we are building, we are, we are planting one tree every day because of the, uh, the, the, the ecosystem. You know, you need to plant actual tree, let it grow. But this guy went to China and molded plastic flowers, tear China, tear over, oh my, oh my God, that guy, that is horrible. My dear, what do you expect a psych patient to do? When you had an apple, you said their head is actually functioning that way. 
And because you're looking at him and he looks normal, he cannot control the madness going on in his brain. So to him, it makes perfect sense. He doesn't understand what you're lamenting about. He okay. has done his best. That, that is his best that you're looking at. That, that is his best? That is his best. Right. No. Anyway, but the, the thing continues. And we keep telling you that it is that constitution that gives them that power to misbehave. And there's nothing else we can do about it. And nobody will hold him accountable ah, after he's done. Made, ah, ah, did he not go to the Senate? From oh. governor to, because once they finish as they promoted, they now get promoted to the Senate where they will remain for 30, 10 years and continue to build car and eat everything that belongs to them. And, and do well for themselves. And do well for themselves and their wives and their kids. And the most annoying part recently, the uh, the presidency, you know, now we call it the president. Nobody even calls president because we don't even know if that man is alive, in all honesty. So the presidency said that there will be importing fuel from Niger Republic. Does that not? <laughs> Go ahead, get your words out, my dear. He's taking care of his fatherland now. Your brother said they don't want. Your brother said they don't care. Your brother said the only thing they want is 2023 presidency. So take our, our land, take our kidneys, take our livers, take our body parts, take everything, and go and build another nation that will take over. He it, 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 it built a refinery with our own money. What, what are you going are, to do about it? Why there are refineries in the uh, uh, South South region? that needs to be repaired. I've been to the elementary refinery one time and I'm like, oh my God, I saw them do gas flaring. I'm like, but this could be, con you know, could be collected and, co and compressed into time. No, this is the latest story. Nigerian, all they, all they will be, be cold. The latest story is that the, the NNPC is that it's under repair, like, uh, uh, how did they say it? They can never repair it because the amount I get you repair is way, way, way like it's so ir irreparable. There you go. So why build, why build it in Nije? Why not build the refinery in our place? Who is going to stop him? The 1999 constitution says he can do whatever he wants. He has a 68 exclusive list that is giving him uh, uh, coverage. So what are you going to do? Sit here and scream when your brothers and sisters are watching them. As I'm telling you now, they're getting ready to buy their latest car to take to the village and show off. That's what they're doing. But that's what, I mean, the funny thing is that uh, the other day, this, uh, what is his name? Uh, Umayi left uh, PDP for AP or whatever. I don't know. You know, they, they fluctuate up and down because he is not interested in becoming the president of Nigeria. Because they are into politics. He is not interested in becoming the president of a country that is worthless. They are political uh, prostitutes. Oh, la la. For how long? Anyway. I, and people are saying that they even need to gather for another NSAS, a kind of an NSAS protest. And the presidency is saying they're not going to tolerate it anymore. And I'm like, does the power not belong to the people? Are we not supposed to be the people to determine who rules us and who messes with us and all what's not? Ah, sister, when I stop here. Your people don't know that they have power. The worst part of it is that the life that they're living, they're not even a life, a life that you don't have control of your future. Is that a life? Yet you're allowing someone that has never offered you anything good in your life to tell you if you're going to exist or not. And then he will finish, your brother will take over and continue. The other person will take over and continue. We're telling you guys that the power belongs to you. Do you all know that if you all, everybody comes out on the street, they will not have enough army to do anything. They will not have enough. These people are so fearful that even one bullet in front of their house, they will catch the next flight to, to Saudi Arabia. That's how serious it is. So let's not let them use their muscle because they don't even have any. Use their voices. See who is talking? Is it Lai Mohammed or the one that called himself general that doesn't know what general means? Who are the ones giving the orders? They, all of them, they don't even know how to apply those guns. He put them gun or not, even just a 32 caliber, you will see Laya Mohammed start telling the truth. He will get on his knees and start vomiting the truth because he's been lying all along. So don't let them fool you, my sister. That's why we are looking for fearless people, fearless men, men that can stand up. Because these people are bullied. They are criminals in power. Men that can stand up to the bullies and say, enough of this bullying, we're not going to take it anymore. That's what we are looking for. They, they were supposed, they scheduled a meeting with the South South. 
and the presidency at the last minute, while people were already in the in the in the uh, auditorium, at the last minute told them that they they were not coming. Why would they why come? Why would they come? Why would they why come? Would they, Who the hell are you? Monkey and a bahan meeting with a slave. How would they come? <laughs> Hey, why would they come? Come to do what? Man, gosh, so messed up. Please, don't be, please go ahead. These pathetic human beings. Yeah, we have said that we are not going to sit down watching them lamenting. We are all for solutions because we have seen that the current political class will never understand the need for instant change because it's working for them. Everything is going for them. So they don't need the people's opinion. The people's opinion does not matter. So at this point, it has become clear that a drastic event is needed to bring this old order, this old order of merry-go-round to an end. So a new order can begin. Like Sogas is saying, for you to have a new system, you have to do away with the old system. It's, it's a no-brainer. It, it, you know that you, you can't mix it because the current political class will not understand. Most of them, like Sister Augusta Elmuna said, are suffering from uh, dementia, you know, vascular dementia. They have diabetes, hypertension, you know, all those things. And this is lead to vascular dementia, you know, in the brain. And uh, it, so the blood vessels are not open for blood to go there and then for them to think. So what you're saying, they're not even understanding what you're saying. You're not making sense to them. So this is not the point to join them in their campaigns. It's not just time to join them in their political activities. They're leading you into dungeon more and more. No need to form all these fraudulent political parties or change political personnel because they're all the same. Like as Sogos said, David Umai is there switching from one political party to the other because all the political parties are the same. No uh, principles, no guiding principle and stuff. So it's the same thing, whether you move from APC or PDP, or, it's really the same, you're not, you just like changing clothes. So they move from one place to the other because they're operating, you know, the, the, the whole system is under the same military decree 24. So there's no difference, they are the same. There's no difference between APC and PDP or any other, party you can form under the military decree 24. There's no difference. They are all bigger and larger than life. And they are above the people. Politics has become to them a full-time career. They are, they are not, you know, like apart from their politics, there's no other thing they can do. They don't have other skills and qualifications. You see leaders elsewhere, like generalists that we're talking about. You see, they have trainings and career. So to them, politics is not a do or die affair. They have other sources of livelihood, other things they can do with their skills and their brain. But for our own leaders, politics is a do or die affair. There's no other source of livelihood. And it's only in Africa that they'll switch from one political position to the other, you know, switch from one position to the other. When they finish being senator, they become governor, then they become a uh, whatever, they become counselor, become anything. Switch from one party to another, from generation to generation. When they finish, their children will join and continue. Jerry Rollins, for instance, was a flight lieutenant and an artist. He had some things that he could do to make himself go forward. Ask your leaders, what job do they do apart from stealing from the people? Ask them. They're your leaders. Ask them. Say, brother or sister, what other job, if you are not a governor, what other job will you be doing? If you are not a senator, what other job will you be doing? What other business will you be running? Because assuming they can build businesses, they'll be ready to employ the masses, employ the youths. They will have somewhere to fall back to if politics is taken away from them. As individuals, they will build and give back to this community. This is what people do. You build and give back to the community. For years, they have refused to understand the plight of the people. They don't care, they don't listen. They know they have nothing to offer our people, but rather than move away, they will 
persistently block the road to our freedom. They know they have nothing to offer. But they will stumble, they will be there, be a stumbling block. They don't have any strategy. They don't have the cognitive ability to understand the high functioning strategy that we need to move from point A to point B. But what will they do? They stay there because our people are watching them. It is time therefore to clean out the house. We need to clean out all the old cargoes that we never offer the people anything in this life. This is 2020. They will never offer the people prosperity. They will not give us the good governance that we want. The house needs to be cleaned. An emergency force is needed by the people. You see, the youths have already started it. They have activated that force. All we are asking you to do is to join in what the youths are doing. Do not delay the youths because they are set to make changes. You see, when Jerry Lawrence made that change, he was just 32 years old. He made that change and followed up. Power belongs to the people. They are the owners of the land. No force can stop the people that are united and ready to get the change they deserve. No force, not even international power. Some people will say, oh, let like say, ah, no, the international people will not give us freedom. No. It is you, the people, that will take your freedom. Nobody's giving you freedom. Look at Ghana. No force can stop a people that are united. And that force we are talking about, because some people, when we say we need to clean the house, the blood-sucking demons are washing their hands and looking for the blood to suck. This is 2020. Jerry did what he did that time because that was what was available then. Now we have UN Declaration for Indigenous People. We have a lot of democratic tools to use. So keep your finger, your trigger, hungry finger. The force we are talking about is constitutional force major. That's what it's called, constitutional force major. A force by the majority of the people saying no to a fraudulent military decree 24 that they miscalled 1999 constitution. Join the people as they get set to make history. This land is ours. It's now our choice. And this is our chance to fix the land. Constitutional force major is the action that you need to change the old system and bring in a new system. Because that singular event will bring down the fraudulent constitution and allow the people to make their own constitution. And then that constitution will go through a referendum, which is a political tool, a, a, a democratic tool as well, that will establish the decision of the people. That is what we need to do. Thank you very much. Thank you, sister. We couldn't say that enough. So this is a time for you to call in or Zoom in or WhatsApp in, however way you want to do it, to add your two cents. You know, um, we need people to come on board with where we're going. Uh, there's option to what we're doing. Like Sisyphe said, it's called Constitutional Force Major. That's the, the force that you can use to get where you're going. And the earlier that you key in and stop fighting your yourself, because some people don't even want to, they are not understanding their brain, how it works. Like, or should I even say they have been enough, they have been in the shit, the latrine, you know what is called latrine, that one that they dig and everybody goes in there and, and have their uh, bowel movement. So you've sit there long enough that now you're even out of the latrine and we're telling you, you're out in the atmosphere. You're like, no, I still smell like shit because you have smelled, the whole shit is in your DNA now. And we're saying, go and take a bath with bleach. Eh? Go and bleach it up. Like if you actually, that's why I like bleach. When you soak yourself in a bleach, it blows out whatever smell that you're dealing with. So this is a time for you to soak yourself with bleach, clean yourself out and begin to also, especially your brain out. 
so he can begin to receive what we are saying and what we are doing and where we are going. We do not have time. Any day that we do not get this done is another day for people to die. They will either die in the hands of the Fulanis, they will die in the hands of the police, they will die in the hands of Zaz, they will die on the streets coming back home to go and show up their new cars. Something is gonna kill them. Or they will have a simple headache. A friend of my brother, a friend of mine, uh, his brother had a headache. They, he said it was bad. He went to the hospital. As soon as they put drip, he died. So we don't know which one killed him. A 30 something year old. One came home to the village, was supposed to go look at a tree. And on his way back, he just passed out and died, still under 40. And that's the kind of news, that's the ever, ever, ever going news that you will get from home. That even here in America, when you see that through two, three, four number on your cell phone, you just pass out. Because either it's either gonna be somebody died, or I, I need money, or something. It will never be, oh, can they came how? No, God forbid. They say it so quick, it's beginning to sound like Spanish. You don't even hear it anymore because it's straight to whatever problems that they're calling you for. So this is a good time to call in and you know um, put in your two cents. And please limit your uh, contribution to today's topic. The number is there, but I can go ahead and call it out. You can come into the Meet Zoom. It's the same meeting ID number that we've had every weekend. It's 987-346-0692. 987-346-0692. So log in or you can call on the phone. Plus one, 774-338-0942. Plus one, 774-338-0942. Or you can call on WhatsApp. Plus one, 281-643-7283. Plus one, 281-643-7283. Like I said, all these numbers are posted also under our topic. Uh, Sister Gosa, can you also, are you able to um, pin it? We will try to pin it. So this is a good time to call in. If we're not calling in, we'll go ahead and conclude with our take home points and call it a day um, so that we can get where we're going. So if we said that this, no, we're not looking for a personal change, we need a system change, absolutely. We are looking for a system change, you know, total. Mm -hmm. Everything revamped, cleaned out, cleaned out, trashed, removed. I mean, we can't even, there's not even a remnant for us to deal with. Everything has to be cleaned out and bleached out and start all over because it's, it's that deep. It's really that dirty. So you're right. We are not talking about personal change, but uh, system change. All right. Anybody else would like to call in? Okay. So Augusta posted the, um, the ID number for you to call. All right, so we we'll give you a few more minutes. Sister, do you have anything to add? We we'll give you a few more minutes and then we'll call it a day to get some stuff done. You have to unmute yourself. I don't know if you're talking. Oh, somebody's here already. Okay, so there's someone in the waiting room trying to come in. Good morning. Good evening. Can, can you hear me? Yes. Good. Yes. How are you? I'm good. I just Hi. I just came back from the field about an hour ago to Lagos. Uh, been on a field uh, inspection of uh, where we are, and oh. um, I wasn't going to call in today, but uh, the subject matter is one in which um, I want to share with our viewers, just as a tribute, as a little tribute to my <laughs> senior friend uh, Jerry Rollins. Um, it turned out that in 2007, 2007 during the last uh, days of uh, Obama, I think it was uh, Bill Clinton was visiting visiting uh, in the aid. Uh, there was some aid event that brought him to Abuja, and uh, I happened to have been in Abuja in that period, and I was uh, heading out. Uh, I was heading back to Lagos, but my my flight was one that I had to wait for about seven hours from uh, the time I thought I would be traveling. So I was at Hilton where this event was taking place. And um, instead of going back to the hotel or doing something else, I just went to the capital. And as I walked in there, here was uh, Rollins. He was attending the event. And um, just 
myself and him in that bar, of course, he had two aides who sat uh, far away. And I, I, I walked up to him and began to tell him, uh, you know, introduce myself, told him what we were doing. And he became very interested. So, hey, you know, and um, by the time, uh, you know, it came to where I, I, we, we, we began to speak about these options. And he said to me, look, that several years after <laughs> they killed a few people, People to get Ghana back on its feet, that they've not recovered fully from it. That every now and then things happen in Ghana, you can't explain uh, where it's coming from. But only those who know who got killed and who survived uh, will be able to explain those things. But that Nigeria is a much more complex uh, uh, situation. He knows Nigeria fairly well, and that um, the kind of plan we had, you know, that that constitution was already in in, in play uh, from to, from 1999, and um, the the matter of Sharia the matter of Sharia and all the other things that compounded uh, in the, uh, the situation. So he said, look, it may be a longer road to go because if we were to kill, if, if we were to go the Rawlings uh, option, that uh, we were going to have uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people to kill and that it might compound our problem, it might, it might, it might spin out of control. That Ghana is small and that uh, their situation hadn't lasted that long, that our own has lasted so very long, we've been through a war and they are that, that the situation is so very different that we shouldn't even contemplate that, but that we have a better chance at solving the problem to the root if we're able to take down uh, this uh, constitution. Okay. 2007, at that time we had finished Pronaco, he was fully informed on those things. You remember the US sent us of our mission, uh, European yeah. Union, all kinds of people were interested that the people of Nigeria were meeting. And so he was, uh, mm -hmm. he was fairly in the know of what was happening. And then seeing this plan behind it of where we go next, he, he, we already had fired that suit, uh, you know, that the suit against the constitution, uh, you know, you remember it was 2007. So I, I put all these things on the table and uh, he was convinced that if we if we could carry it through, uh, that it was the better thing to do, uh, it might be a longer road, but that was his uh, advice. And he pleaded, you know, uh, uh, passionately that we should not even consider going to kill, a, you know, <laughs> that we're going to create a bigger problem than the one we were trying to solve. So that's uh, what, uh, and you know, we, we, uh, I can report to our people, uh, the first major we're talking about may be sounding like a distant uh, thing to them. I can tell our people that uh, it, it's, not, it's, not, it's not rocket science. Only political parties, because so many are asking, what exactly do we have to do? It has actually come to, uh, we're satisfied now, we can let some of the information out that wasn't in, the, that were not in the public uh, space uh, before. We are all agreed now that the constitution is a problem. Everybody knows, including the people that, uh, that did SARS. They've been studying the situation. They didn't go to sleep. They now know more than even the people causing the problem, what, uh, what uh, uh, you know, uh, the situation is, that the constitution is the problem that has to be solved, the tap that has to be turned off. Abuja also knows that that constitution you know, uh, will not survive from what is coming at it. And so, the, the power they want to shift to the east uh, is uh, in some kind of exchange. Look, let us, let us give up power temporarily and save this constitution. So those who are warming up to go to contest election in 2023 are actually doing so to help them save the constitution that will otherwise be gone. And so our people have to understand that very clearly. It's not a matter of uh, whoever wins will govern with that constitution. Therefore, all of what that constitution imposes on us, including the 36 states and the seven and seven local government areas and the 68 item exclusive list, everything that constitution imposes will remain in place. A few people may go to make money if they win, win if they if they coronate them, because it won't be a matter of winning any election, just a matter of and you'll be there at their mercy. I, I was I was I was very closely involved uh, in the time uh, Jonathan was in place. There are many things Jonathan wanted to do, but he, was, he, was, he, he wasn't able to do it because uh, that constitution would not let him. And he was almost at the mercy of the people who could, who could, they were just molesting him. They didn't let him govern. And so that would be the situation with anybody else who goes there uh, to say he's president under this constitution. And so uh, everybody now realizes that that constitution is a problem. The consensus we have is, 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 is awesome across the land, South, Middle Belt, young people now, and the International Committee have been explained to it, particularly the US. And um, the next thing to take to mind is that only political parties contest elections. 
And it is by election that that constitution is sustained. In fact, let us take it in another, in another order. The constitution is the problem and nothing will change except it's taken down. That's number one. Number two is that election is the mechanism by which the life of the constitution is renewed every four years. It, if, if you remove elections, the, if on account of having repudiated the constitution, like we, we, we've taken this uh, last uh, 20 years to do, to organize people to repudiate that constitution, they've repudiated. They've actually given long notice of their intention to, 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 to you know, uh, uh, reject further elections on that since 2018, just for everybody to know that it's not a, a, you know, a matter of uh, boxing and wrestling from the first day. But that now that decision has to be enforced that we will not go to renew the life of that constitution. We're not going to renew our enslavement by just going to vote and getting people to continue to govern and uh, you know, validate that constitution one more season. And so only political parties, and this is the Trump card, only, the, only political parties contest elections. Since we have repudiated that constitution across board by those solemn assemblies that happened, the three blocks are coming together to say, we will not. We will not let this survive beyond now. We must. They, we, they, our our decision to do away with the constitution has to be enforced now, not tomorrow. And so, it is in stopping those political parties from taking us under election early enough that will force everybody to the table. It is enforcing in taking on those political parties. Say, look, PDPO, APCO, APGAO, whatever political party. As long as it is that constitution you use to govern when you win, you must close shop until we have decided how we live together. That is what we'll be inviting our people to do in the days to come. And not, not uh, many months away, not even several weeks away. We more in days than in weeks. That all of those who want an end to their enslavement will be invited to stop the political parties in 2020 from getting into the cycle of planning for another election. They are struggling to save that constitution by dragging us to election. We can stop them by stopping the journey to election. If we do that little, just getting the political parties, young people listening should pay attention to this. That's all you'll be required to do. Just get the political parties in your neighborhoods. You don't have to go to Sokoto. You don't have to go to search for army or behead police. No, political party, you must, you must close shop until we decide the constitution by which any winner of any election will govern. If, if, if we do that little, we can begin to put dates to when every other thing will happen because that constitution will be distressed, will go into transition, and then we go during the referendums to decide what to do with our sovereignty. If we do not want to engage in that fight, if we say, oh, it's too difficult to do, the other fight we are bargaining for by refusing to do this will be the day AK-47 turn up at our doorsteps because that's what we'll get from going to another election under this constitution. I pray it doesn't get to that, but we have a chance now to end this trauma once and for all. Anybody inviting you to come to do election or come and take, even if Buhari resigns today to say, let an evil man come and be president, it doesn't change the situation. That's, we're not even talking about election. That, oh, things are so hot, Ibo, come and do your talk. Because it sounds to me like an invitation to come and lead the robbery gang to come and lead the rape of a people. That's what it sounds like. So a few, the, those who volunteered, to, who bring themselves forward to go to do that, we already told them that they're going to put themselves on a head-on collision with uh, with uh, these uh, masses of people who are whose lives have been traumatized beyond redemption, and uh, they know that that is the case. They're just they're just gambling, you know. They won't they won't give up until something begins to crack around them. And so we just informing our people up front that that first measure is all about setting dates, lines for when things will have to happen. That constitution cannot remain the basis of any union, cannot be basis of another election. And it's not, we're not talking about boycott here because that's another confusion. Boycott is to stay away from voting on the, at the, at the, at the you know, uh, voting stage. But at that point, it's already too late because they will go on with whoever is not boycotting and they will have an outcome and then somebody will be sworn in. The way to avoid that is that it is to shut down the, the preparations, let the parties close shop in water because there's no other thing they are doing there than to lure you and drag you and convince you to go to another election with them. They will make money if they become governor or make money if they become senator or even councillor or chairman of uh, some kind of thing 
even appoint board appointments. That's all they are doing to try to go to get that benefit. As a senator, you go home with 50 million every month. As a governor, you go get a allocation of 50 billion or, or 20 billion from time to time. That is, that's all they're interested in. The rest of the people can die, but we can see now that there's no, it's not heading anywhere. And so if you're on the side of keeping that constitution alive, then you, you are the one preparing to go to election with them. If you're on the side of ending our trauma, then you must be on the side of taking that constitution down on the side of stopping the journey to election. It's as simple as that. It doesn't, it, just, it, it can't get any simpler than this. That's why it took so long to plan. And we are at the point where we can actually, you know, execute it and get the outcome we want. We're a majority and the guns, everybody's pointing at everybody. It's going to have a, I'm sure some of us have had a, the, 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 the people who have national security interests in our arena. They're actually on their way. They are not waiting for whatever happens with the election is not going to be of any consequence to the fact that ISIS and Al Qaeda are pouring in here. The institutions have taken over. Their mandate is there. And so let those who are, who are terrified about the guns uh, that Fulani have been pointing at everybody, uh, those in uniform, those out of uniform, you call henchmen, all those guns are, are completely useless at this point if we declare this sovereignty dispute. And in declaring the sovereignty dispute, our task to get the result we want from it is to stop those charlatans from Eastern Nigeria who are now talking about uh, whose, whose turn it is to lead the rape, to be president. That's all we need to do. And this matter will be that we'll see the back of that constitution you know, in, a, in a time we can fix by ourselves uh, and not uh, waiting definitely for people who are never going to listen to any reason. I think that's all I want to uh, uh, chip in at this time. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so the man has said it again. We can sit in a circle and run around like chicken with no heads, or we can key into the information and run for our dear lives. So it doesn't get any easier than that. So we are going to go with our take home point. Um, let me pull that up. Again, the take home point is to be able to narrow all the things I've talked about to just a few things that you should remember at the end of the day. We are serious as a heart attack in getting this job done. We have no more time to waste. You know, our life is actually on hold while we're waiting to get you guys to do the right thing. So the sooner that you key in, the sooner that we can get where we're going. Um, democracy is the government of the people while dictatorship is the government of dictators. Of course, the two cannot go except if they agree. So you cannot form a nation except there's an agreement to do so. In our own case, somebody came and did something on our behalf and was not, uh, we were not invited. And then on top of that, they wrote a, a decree that is holding us uh, 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 hostage in our own land where we are not able to do anything to improve the future for our children. And then we look into referendum, which is a democratic tool used by people to express their decisions. We don't have that. Since we mentioned earlier, as soon as we get this uh, constitutional force major done, the referendum will come in where you as a citizen, because we want to return the power to you. The sovereignty belongs to you as, as a citizen of that country for you to express your uh, right. There's also this peaceful protest, which is a democratic tool used by the public to register their displeasure and disagreement. We have planned that already and we saw the outcome. Again, it's a 1999 constitution that has to be blamed. If you don't take that 1999, uh, I take it back, military decree, the same 1999 military decree that can cause them to come out and do the things that they are doing to you. Everything goes back to the decree that is holding us hostage. You look into the freedom of speech and association as part of democratic government. We do not have that in that country called Nigeria. And then to solve all this problem, we have to end the 1999 military decree. We have it as constitution here, but it's a military decree in order for us to return or to restore the people's confidence. Because right now we have none. Like the Ghanaians, we are the crossroad Everything is falling apart. The country is being run by bullies and criminals in power. They are monopolized. They are using the resources that should be able to 
have a free market, an open market for competition, they will hand it over to their brother and parade him as the most richest guy, as if he has the brain, as if he has the brain, and parade him as the most richest guy in Africa, while the rest of us that went to Harvard and paid all our school fees and loan seats and watch a mumu that doesn't know how to write his name become the richest man in Africa because somebody gave him the power to monopolize what should be given to the rest of the citizens. So we need to understand these things. If you don't have these things in order, understanding what democracy is, understanding that we cannot um, uh, form a nation when we do not agree, understanding that we have the power for, uh, to have a referendum as well as peaceful protests, these bullies in power will continue to deal with us. It is just that simple. Sister. Thank you, uh, Sister Mona. Thank you, Sister Augustine. And if I one, it's your quiet at Abuna. Or Chichi, on your quo chair, and a poor democracy, no quo o yubo, but Chichi in Dubud. Man or Chichi, on your one nam, on your dunam, and a poor dictatorship, no quo yubo. Bo in candy tibo na zobo. In cabo. Madu Abwa Agaye Jenje Moburu na he kweko in wedding kweko letter ni mumweha. No twa kaho Agaye yibe ubudo abula no buru na ndi ubudu in wedding kweko letter ni mumweha. Nkato Ntunyaka ndi ubudu ana bo referendum no kwo yibu. Bu sorundi obodoji e kumoha na mbibi ha. Ozo. Ngagariwe. Bu uzo ndi obodoji e gusi nubi adeye hama. Nke ise. Ike inwere inwe nkuwa oku na nzuko ndi obodo di chiche. Bu ihe ejirimara Ochichi onye kuo uche ya ana o democracy no kuma beke. Nki bazo. Mmo ni ikike ndi obodoji e bindo. Galachi ya. Ma oburo na adotuo ajo nto ala nka ana o military decree 24 of 1999. Nde wono. Nde wono. Mr. Augusto. Okay, I'll try. Eka raw awe nyowa. Ijo bati wanti wa. Ni awe nyowa fe. Awo fe ijo ba akpani yon. Awo meji don lupa le ni igbagbo o ade yon. Ale da ori le de kan. Referendum. O wuni. I job ba ti wan ti wa in rin she. Ta wan in yon man lo. Ta wan wan in yon wan man lo. La ti so yon kota yon fe. Yon kota yon fe ron. Then peaceful protest. A la fe a protest a la fe. Ou nan ni in rin she. Democratic tu. Ta wan kwenye democratic tu. Ta wan akosi le. Man lo. La ti so yon kota yon bi wan ni nou. I think what you want back, but when I did it, so be Ominira or at a Joshua. Oh, well, no one in no a job and to want to what I fair. I'm Bob Bokini, Cole Shelley. Tia ba June 1999 Constitution, yeah, Kale. Tabati Ju Kale. Go bon kota ti. Ba lati 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 bere ale tu be bo mwa si eh, ibito ye kwa so ending the 1999 constitution on ni kolo le funwa ni igbe ke le te a fe bi a mwen yon eh, ilu nigeria e she pupo thank you Thank you, Sister Augusta. Somebody just came in, so they just allow that, and then we'll 
Anthony, they, I don't know why our people wait to the last minute to call it. When you tell them to call it, they don't call it. And now it's connecting, connecting. I wonder if that's going to work today. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. People has our people have been in, in the latrine for so long that they don't know what to do. They're used to eating uh, shit from the latrine. That's what they eat off of. So even at their level of uh, education, as a lawyer, as a doctor, as whatever a PhD holder, when they can't even reason very well, and they actually the worst part of it, they are still talking when their brain is not really working. The executive function of their brain is gone, but they are fluent in, in speech. So you'll be there listening to them. You don't know that they can't even connect the dots. They don't know, they don't, they, and they're not being funny. They are not trying to be cute either. It's just that they are not realizing what's going in their brain. They are walking off of, oh, I have PAG from uh, Oxford. I have this one from here. So they don't know that the train has left the train station. They are sitting there seeing something sitting on the train i thought that was a train and our people are still there. It, it, it's so unfortunate that you know um you know we we have talked at length about this um issue oh is the person on now i think so Ike, do we want to turn on your video uh, no. I think my... no it's not on look at the uh at the bottom left you will see the mic and then the video. If you click on it, it has a line on it. If you click on it, it will launch. There you are. Okay, we can see you now. Go ahead. Okay, good evening, sisters, and um, thank you for letting me in to today's uh, program. Okay, so I am. Is we can, can you speak up a little? Yeah, we can hear you. It's not far away. Increase the volume. Okay. Let me let me add my ears and see if it can be better. Um, can you hear me right better now? Can you hear me better now? Yes. All right. Okay. So what happened was that I just listened to Mazi uh, Tony Nadi's uh, commentary. So, all right. So uh, actually, actually, the the comment uh, uh, Tony Nadi gave to us right now motivated me to come in and uh, you know make my little contribution. Uh, it's really, really, really very, very unfortunate and uh, too bad that some of our people are still at a loss as to what is required of us in actually taking down the 1999 constitution, which we call the force majeure. And um, I just want to let us uh, understand the actions required uh, in a very uh, simple language. Like he just rightly uh, said some couple of minutes ago that um, without elections going on, the constitution would not be sustained. Mm. And it's only political parties that um, contest election, which means the life wire of the constitution is being sustained and empowered by political parties. Absolutely. Okay. So now he said that what we need to do is to tell the politicians, the political parties, to close shop. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this language is too simple for us to understand. In fact, it has come to the point where we need to call the political parties to suspend action, to call their political activities to a, a halt. The request should be part of the uh, protest uh, slogans that we might use for people to uh, start calling the political parties to the condition for even to come to negotiation for anything, just like it happened in the NSAC protest, should be for the political parties to suspend action until the constitution with which they are going to govern is ratified. Because right now, the constitution that they are using, they are aware that it's a forgery. They know that it's a fraud. 
Mm -hmm. They know that is the reason why we are going nowhere. That is why we are a mockery of a nation. That is why our people are suffering. They know that this constitution is the reason why people are being killed every day. They mm -hmm. know that this is the reason why we can never have any development. We, the politicians know. So it is better that we call on the, we are going to call them by their names. We call APC, we call PDP, we call APGA, we call all the police to suspend action. Suspend mm -hmm. action for now. Close shop. We are not asking you to disband. Close shop, just suspend action because we cannot allow you, we cannot go with you to any other election that is going to give more life to this constitution that is responsible for the death of many millions of Nigerians. In fact, from my calculation, I just sat down to make some personal assessment of what has been going on. And I discovered that the number of people that have been killed due to the management of this country via this constitution has outnumbered the number of people the uh, uh, the, the civil war that happened in Nigeria claimed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a fact. Anybody mm -hmm. can go and 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 prove me wrong. The number of people killed by the management of this constitution as a ruling tool in Nigeria has surpassed the number of people killed over the barrel of gun and starvation that they implemented on don't the forget, eastern Ma, region Ma, part of this. Don't region. forget the collateral damages. The people in overseas that are your family broke 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 up because you're stealing money to give to your brothers. Your husband is stealing to give to the sister. Before you know it, the husband and wife is living as home uh, as roommates. You know they are not there to train their kids. So when you talk about oh. just one thing, it's it's endless. People are miserable. People have been living fake life just to maintain their their sanity. It's on a magic. They are not even living. They are not even. How do I say it? They are just existing. They are not even living. They are here, but they you don't see, know what's going on. When we look at when we when we when we look at when we look at the number of people that are holding us hostage, that is a very in fact it is a very big slap on the entire population of this country called Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The number of people holding us hostage is less than zero point zero one one percent of the number of people that they are subjecting into 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 perpetual hell, suffering hell so it is time it is time for people to start calling on political parties to stop so far that is exactly what we need to do now we need to call on these political parties to suspend action to close shop until we have determined with which constitution they are going to you know govern Absolutely. So that is my contribution tonight. Thank you so much and God bless. Thank you. Thank you. And this is what we're looking for. Thank you, Ma ZK Chuku. Did you see how he paid particular attention to what matters? Some people will sit here, they'll be talking, ah, hey, that thing is not going to, it's not going to work. Mumu, you'll be sitting in your house in New Jersey, ranting, where you don't have a plan. And this is typical of an African man. They will see somebody else with a plan. The last thing they will do is to, Help that person make that plan to come to fruition because they don't have anything to offer. They want all of us to be running in circles, back and forth, run around, praying, talking trash, dealing, lamenting. That's what they want to do. They will see what their brother is doing. The last thing they will do is to go and the last thing they will do is to go and uh, to to have an in-depth look into what their brother and sister is doing to see does it make sense. Oh. God forbid, even if they really, because they already have ulterior motive, they still will not understand it. And we don't have time anymore. So when we are calling out people, people will say, oh, you're calling this group of people. We are sick of it. We are sick of it. Start doing work from the neck of the, of, of the wood. We really need to get this going. You know, when we say close shop, we are not kidding here. As long as you're running election of, with that constitution or the military decree, you are giving life to it. You are giving life and life and life and life to it. And we have had a good case study with Jonathan where he went in and they made his life ungovernable or his, can you hear one out? Well, he's a uh, yeah. yeah, ungovernable. You know, and you guys sat there, none of you did anything, no. And now you think you're the smart one that will go and get it done. Come on, people. Stop kidding yourselves. We need to go. We need to go. Everybody else is moving. Even when they're doing well, they still have, they still have daily struggles. So imagine us that haven't even started. We have daily struggles and we haven't even started to do the work that we need to do as a nation to move forward. And some people are just, they just take joy in delaying it. 
It's like they were giving birth to make sure the rest of us live in hell with them. Mm-hmm. And we are saying, Sister Queen, we said, no, I'm not going in hell with you. I'm going to stay up here and give you my hand. If you want to come out, I'll pull you out. Then I'm not going to go into the latrine with you. No, Mumu. No, does it make sense, punk? It doesn't make sense. We are not going to the toilet with you. We are going to stay on top and get you, put your hand in there and get you out if you want to come out. If you don't want to come out, stay in your uh, uh, to- latrine and sit there and eat, eat it till you die. So we thank you, Mazi Ikechuku, you know, that's it. And, and it's not just you hearing this information, it's you sharing, sharing this information. Our people need alternative from loud radio speaking in their ear and then when they finish, they will go and join the church uh, fasting and praying on Wednesdays. Uh, you will see people, they don't even have a, a chapstick on their lip. They're all dried up from fasting and praying, looking pathetic, you know. So we're not even talking about that anymore. Let's use this thing and give people as an alternative to all the fake promises that they have been given. Because it's, uh, some people are still waiting till December 31st to blow up. They said a lot of the loud mouth followers, they said come December 5th to 31st, all hell will break loose. I wish you guys luck. No hell we need to break loose. All you have to do is to key into what makes sense so that we can move. That's what we're saying. Stop wasting time. It's not, it's not, it's not that complicated. Stop wasting time. Share this good information. As you can see, uh, Facebook is blocking our show. They are. Because I, they wanted me to pay them. I've been paying them. And I didn't want to pay them anymore. All of a sudden, they are blocking it. So we know what's going on. But it's up to you, 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 because you're the one being held hostage. Facebook is busy making money. They don't care if, if things changes or not. They would rather give notification to some. I saw a, a Cherubin and Seraphine, uh, somebody, they were sitting on top of a bucket. Two of them doing crazy stuff. My dear, they have one point something people watching them. And then when you do something that will liberate your people, Facebook will not send notification. It will block. Because they don't want the people to be liberated. They, they want you to show stupid stuff that will make the people to continue to be stupid. Teach them stupid religion that will make them continue to be stupid, even to God that they think they're worshiping. God looks at you the way you practice Christianity. He starts crying. He says, why are they so stupid? I mean, this religion is not Christianity, the Bible. If you can study the Bible, you will be wise. When you're not studying the Bible, you go and look at uh, Cherubin and Seraphim put, telling you to put leg inside water. You know, stupid stuff. And you want results? That's why you're not getting the results you're getting even in your private life. But like Sister Mona said, we are here to drag you to freedom. How about that? We will drag you to freedom. So we are not waiting. By fire, by force. Yes. We are Whether you to... like it or not, we will drag it. We are dragging you to freedom. You don't have choice. No, no. I see people making stupid comments. We, I know. You, you see the strategy we are working on. You need a high mental functionality to understand it, to even begin to uh, cons- you know, understand the concept. So we understand. Some of you speak good English, but unfortunately, like Sister Muna said. Uh, you're suffering from uh, vers- vascular dementia yeah. and um, you're not able to be like some part of the brain is not functioning well and, and it's not abuse. These are medical things we are explaining to you. So you listen very well. So as being that we are in the medical field, we understand what you're going through. You will be able to speak English. You will be able to pass some in- English. Very exam. fluent. Yes, mm-hmm. you'll be fluent in English. So but there are certain things that you will not be able to understand. So even when they're explaining it to you, it will not make sense to you. You can't link it up because there's some wires. My people will say some wires are disconnected. Mm-hmm. So that's what happened. Because of that vascular dementia, some parts of your brain are no more alive to receive information like signals, you know, so that the things they're saying will make sense to you. So we understand. That's what we said. We will drag you to freedom. We will do it. <laughs> we mothers, we're here to do it. We're ensure. Mm-hmm. Working with LNC, MNN, the way they're doing, they're doing well, they're moving forward. They don't need multitude. I say it again. Exactly. We don't need multitude. Mm-hmm. Because in multitude, you have disabled, you have blind, you have crippled, you have mad people that think that they're not mad, but they're actually very mad, schizophrenics and all that. That's why you have a multitude. That's why God that never <laughs> works with multitude. He will always say, I'm looking for a man to send. If you read that, your Bible. Yeah. And now he has more than a man. He has even three, three women. Yeah. Three. So we are here. <laughs> we are here to form partnership with God. We have formed partnership with him. We are here to bring freedom and we'll drag you to the freedom. Mm-hmm. And you don't have choice. 
By the yeah, way, they don't have choice. So no. we, we what uh, Mansi Kechiku said. I think we need to blow the the advert on this uh, our supposed uh, uh, politicians that they should close shop. So I think with the end 1999 constitution, let us also say close uh, shop for the uh, political party. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 the uh, political party political parties in Nigeria. Yes. So now, because so now, suspend them, so okay. suspend them. Let, let's just walk close shop. Maybe that would you know it would, mm -hmm. it would um resonate faster and then, probably make more sense for these uh, uh, people. So yeah. for, for those that are thinking, like Sister we rightly said that you know we do not need multitude. I, we cannot overemphasize that multitude. Should, you sure you guys want somebody that will be praising? praising uh, Tony Nadi, uh, like the way we are praising the other Supremo. Is that what you all want? Eh? But Tony Nadi doesn't even want you to call him his title. He will just say, call me Tony. Sometimes I used to say, is this guy really a Nigerian? Because all of us, we love title. We want you to call us doctor, uh, uh, call all of our degree from beginning to the end. But he doesn't even want you to call him a barrister. He will just say, call me Tony. Sometimes I'll just put Mazi so that because let him know that uh, me, I'm trying to respect him. You understand? Yes. Hey, so uh, our people, we do not need multitude. We not we do not need to sing. I was talking to somebody the other day and he was saying that Tony has to sponsor his campaign. And I'm like, duh, sponsor what campaign? Campaign to save you. They he don't understand. Sponsor his campaign. They don't hey, understand. You are in Ghana suffering. You don't have a job. You are in Ghana, the same Ghana that we're talking. I remember in those years when the Ghana uh, when this guy um, I think it was in Shagari's regime. What oh, he was Buhari. Was is Buhari this fake Buhari again? He said, well, Ghana I, must go. He sent them out. Ghana yeah. must go. So the Ghana must go era. Have you have they forgotten so soon? And when Ghana left, they went to go and rebuild their own nation. But you are presently in Ghana. You're not doing anything. That's what we know that you are not doing anything. And somebody <laughs> is giving you an opportunity that hey, let us fix this country so that you can leave that Ghana and come back to Nigeria. And and probably survive. And you're saying he has to sponsor him. He has so to that's the brain damage we are saying now. He has to put you know, brain damage. Only I will know a young man. We would have said, okay, maybe because he's old. No, some of, of them, you know, some, some of them growing up did it. Yeah, some of them fix here during birth. Yes, oh, yes. Yeah, they still have oh, a yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we have a lot of issues. And the medical issues, yes. Better as here. Yeah, better as here. And then malnutrition. Malnutrition. Early childhood. Early childhood. You will not make the child to uh, develop the cap brain capacity the child needs. So we understand these things. So that's why we are not arguing with certain people. I will say we'll bring the freedom and take you to freedom. We'll capture you to freedom. Now that nails it for me because you, is it that your brain did not receive enough oxygen? Is I will try to blow it into your brain now and you still... Yeah. They won't understand it. Yeah. Nah, I, don't, I don't understand these people. But anyway, mm -hmm. we need to start the campaign. They should close shop. The Umayis of this world, close that MF shop. We don't need it. You want to go and be the president of Nigeria? You, 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 are, you are a full and new slave. It's so obvious. We don't even need any, any suit, say, or any, any, any uh, what is it called? Um, yeah, psych to look into a globe and see what you are. You are a full and new slave. You are the caliphate slave. That is who you are. That is why you are defecting. One day you are in AP, the other one you are in the other PDP or whatever. You can. Okay, he has been up. captured now. He has been captured. Yeah, you cannot come and use that 1999 constitution on us. You cannot because they want you to keep it on. So, Umayi, close shop. Close shop. Stop it. Help your people. Your people are crying. They are calling your name now to help them. Help your people. Close shop, Umayi. Uh, all Jews of Kalu, close shop. Okoracha, close shop. All these other South South governors, they have done it to Yung Tong. You invited them over and they did not come. The, the, the main place where the resources that cleans up their northern region comes from. You invited your the presidency over that since the gold that belongs to Zanfara belongs to Zanfara. Now, what about the oil that belongs to you? Why, why does the oil not, not become your own? Oh, you don't have oil wells. Your, your chiefs, your agents or whatever do not have oil wells. Is the northerners that have access to the oil well in your own backyard. And you call the presidency to come and let us resolve this thing. And they, they didn't even answer you. They just wrote you one small letter that they are busy. 
Yo, do you want in that kind of a country? A country mm -hmm. that does not regard you. Meanwhile, the primary source of wealth comes from your region. Close oh. shop. All of you, close shop. We know they buy. Close all your shop. We are not buying anything that you are selling. Because it's not going to make, it's not going to help us. Close shop. We are not buying. And I draw, I draw a lot of inspiration from what Ghana did, you know, what Jerry Rollins did. And you find out that that revolution did not take the multitude. It is just few people that understood where they needed to go to. And they were even the ones that liberated uh, uh, Jerry when he was in prison. You know, they went and planned his escape and brought him out, his boys. So what we're saying is that we don't need the entire populace to understand the proposal. We are encouraging those of you that are already understanding. Do not be discouraged that your neighbor is not understanding because he might not have the brain capacity to understand. This needs high brain functionality. Even though it's simple, but I don't know, like what Mr. Augusta said, some of them you know, they have issues, so they won't be able to understand. They already, it's like an abuse, a woman in a marriage where the husband is always busy beating you and all that. So you're already used to being beaten. If we, by any accident, God not be, uh, bring a lover to you, you see, it will be difficult for you. So when he's loving you, you will be doubting it. You say, ah, 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 oh, okay, this man, see how he's talking to me with respect to, see how he's uh, pampering me. Is this normal? Maybe he's going to die. Maybe he's planning to kill me. Maybe he used me to do ritual. She will never believe because she's already used to abuse. So we understand the situation of our people. They already used to abuse, used to, like even when you have issues to talk, it has to be baga, 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 baga. So they're used to someone that is on the radio shouting, wah, 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 wah. So when you tell them, come, let's sit down and negotiate, they don't understand it. So but we're saying, those that understand, please do not be discouraged. Continue to spread this message. Talk to your friends if they understand. Go with it. Like Jesus Christ said, if you spread the gospel, he said, if you come into the house and spread, they do not want to accept. He said, clean the dust off your leg and move forward. There are so many other people that we understand. So the one, the one that doesn't understand, leave the person, we will move. Once we get that number of people, you know, we are moving and it will help us. And that revolution that we are talking about is coming. Watch out for it. The only time we will now miss the entire people is for referendum, where you will not have to vote. But by then, everything will be ready for you. So we understand. We are fixing everything for you. Get ready to eat. Thank you. Thank you. We have a brother, uh, Madhu Elijah. I don't know if you want to call in or not. We are trying to end the show. Uh, he said that he needs our milks. Uh, yeah, maybe he doesn't want to talk. All right. Thank you, sisters and brothers, for joining us. You know, I, I'm glad that Sister P made this final statement that we don't need a multitude, even if it's the 50 of us watching now that understands what's going on, and we tell another 50. So think about it. If the 50 people tell one person this week, and that one person tells another person this week, and that one person, so you can imagine how we can multiply our numbers. And as we are speaking, we, you know, you know the reasonable people are amongst you. I know since I, you know, as an adult, you realize that, oh, if I need guidance, if I need good counsel, this is who I need to talk to. Go to those people and start talking to them. Those ones that you know that are reasonable, not the ones that have certified madness going around. We are not looking for those ones because very soon we'll finally get our nation and we'll build a nice place to go and revisit their madness. So find the ones that are into what is being done, talk to them, have them understand the project that is going on so that when referendum comes, they will know what to do. And like, we are not looking for you to even come in, I just for you to understand that these things are going to happen and for you to key into the process. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We are so honored to, to be here uh, to share this information. And we, again, we thank our brother, Jerry Rollins for standing up for the people. Somebody gotta do it. Somebody had to do it to stand in the gap. So if we can give our Tony, our brother Tony Nadi the kind of support that he needs, to take this project up to where it needs to be, would have been done by now. Whether you find yourself in Ghana, marrying, uh, getting a girl pregnant that you cannot afford, whatever thing you're doing over there, you know, and uh, whatever that is holding you hostage, if you key into the process, your life, your life will actually become better. And the good news that we are ending is towards the end of the year. So yeah, a few more months, a few more weeks now, we'll be at the beginning of the new year. 
if we get this right, I keep saying it over and over again, if we get this right, we run the chance of starting afresh next year. But if you continue to wallow away in your stupidity and your lack of confidence and, oh, because I'm not the one that bring the idea, I'm not going to project it. Oh, because they have not given me money. Some even say, oh, you have to buy me a cell phone. Some had the audacity to say, we have to buy them a cell phone for them to join what we are doing. Punk? No. The only cell phone you will get is the one you try to use and you'll be talking to your forefathers, okay? So nobody's giving you any cell phone. So we will get this freedom. We will capture you and take you to the freedom land. How about that? Tigna Baras, we in a book taking up Baras, you who will get with a free through freedom. So we are not going to wait for your madness to heal. So we thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye bye.